The chopsticks move, they're not broken. Astra and Ursa Major get hitched. Japanese company iSpace puts a lander on the moon. All this and more on tomorrow's Space News. The private Japanese company iSpace has put their Hakuto-R lander on the moon and haven't heard back from it. To quote their report, iSpace engineers monitored the estimated remaining propellant reached at the lower threshold, and shortly afterward, the descent speed rapidly increased. They report most likely that they made a hard landing on the surface of Luna. The company have also said, iSpace has already accomplished a tremendous feat by entering lunar orbit and attempting a fist landing. If I hear that as first landing, yes, agreed. If they meant fist landing, it seems that they would have been successful. They don't report how fast it was going at contact, so I just trust that they know what they mean by hard landing. In any case, they have not received further telemetry after contact, and that fits the hard landing hypothesis. They have learned much and will learn more from all the data, the real payload, and have plans for the next attempts already in motion. We wish them best of luck in their missions. Astra is a rocket company that impressed the heck out of me for successfully horizontally launching a vertical rocket without harming the pad with Astra 3, when one out of five of their motors failed at first movement, leaving only approximately enough thrust to hover. They have learned much and are proceeding to Astra 4, their next upgrade, and to that end are announcing a partnership with a rocket maker I'm only just learning about, Ursa Major. Ursa Major is a company of about a hundred people working very carefully to build the bestest, safest rocket they can. From what they show, they are taking great pains to test every failure mode they can imagine. So by my amateur lights, they are doing it right, and I intuit a better than average chance of success. We will bring you developments in their mission as we learn them, so make sure to keep an eye on the channel, because we will be bringing you the latest news on Astra and Ursa Major as we learn more about their latest rocket system. Oh, it's so foggy in here. You know where else is foggy? Vandenberg Space Force Base, the West Coast base, is leasing Space Launch Complex 6 to SpaceX. This launch pad was last used for the final Delta IV heavy flight last September and was also the planned Space Shuttle West Coast launch site with about $4 billion spent and Enterprise being test fitted to make it ready back in the 80s before the Challenger disaster restricted the shuttle's use to the Cape in Florida. Current documentation suggests that SpaceX is intending to launch their workhorse Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets from this historic site, much like LC-39A, their only other dual-use pad. Nothing was noted about Starship, however, but Starbase was originally intended to be a private Falcon launch site, so anything's possible. In the long run, this might double SpaceX's West Coast capacity, next to Slick 4 East. SpaceX has managed an impressive launch cadence using their reusable first stages and multiple launch sites, really getting a lot of use of LC-39A and Slick 40 on the East Coast, and this would probably allow a much higher cadence for the polar orbits best reached from Vandenberg. I am particularly fond of Vandenfog, maybe because it is day trip close for me. And while we love to dig on them over their poor visibility, it's important to note that the reason this base is located there is that the fog helps to protect the military assets. For Space Launch Delta 30, the range you oversee Vandenberg, the fog is a feature, not a bug. I'm really looking forward to future years when I get to hear more flights in person. I'll leave it to Jamie and the Vader team to show me all the pretties. I can live with that. Thank you to the citizens of tomorrow who helped to fund this show month after month. Your kind contribution helps to keep 204 alive and activated, and in return for the ground support, suborbital, orbital, escape velocity, and plaid pro plus citizens get access 
to a variety of different perks. If you want to see how you can see news scripts as they're being written, gain access to our member streams, and much more, head to the Join button below. At Starbase this week, following the launch on 420, we saw the chopsticks finally move, confirming that no critical parts were destroyed by the blast of Super Heavy. This is great news! as such large custom items aren't easy to produce overnight, so this bodes well for the return to flight when SpaceX is ready for the next iteration. There was a little news about the FAA grounding Starship over excessive debris outside the flight plan, and this is very normal. It's standard practice. I expect this won't delay things unnecessarily, and was expected for any anomalies that impacted the flight plan. For example, Relativity's Terran-1 is currently grounded, even though they don't plan on flying it again. 